Maybe I'm crazy, but we're 100 hey, today. Hey, uh, 100. We keep it 100. Just for this week, then we'll be 101 next week. The remix. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. Welcome to the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. That's Brandon Newman. And this is our 100th episode of the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Shout out to everybody. There was supposed to be a lot of noise in the room for that, but let's do it again. This is our 100th podcast. Come on. Can't be scared to celebrate. Not on number 100. Come on, room. So a lot of discussions about rap going on. Jeez, oh yes. Out here yeah, in the world, right. which we are yeah. going, we're, we're going to get into. Rapping I'm right. Rap. Um, and Stop. the reason that I know that I'm right is because my post has gotten very little interaction. <laughs> which, which in the, in this case means that yes, most people agree. Mm. Like you don't feel so compelled to argue. You the know, internet was created I... for two reasons: porn and arguing. And yes. in this case, if it's not, opinions if there's no arguing, arguing yeah, yeah. or opinions, then right. it's because it's like. Mm, yeah, you know, it's, I, you know, I can kind of live with that list. Yeah, if you can't live with the list, you feel compelled to be like, nah, dog, that ain't it. Right, Which right, is why right. your list is getting mad fire, I mean, and mine is like, no, you know what I'm saying? I got a little like. <laughs> My not, list is a, right. It's not a competition. There's a lot of lists out there that yes. are wrong, okay? Especially this week. My list is right. Earl Watson is going to join us. That is my fiance. He's also the GOAT, and he is a Shouts regular... Out. Guests yes, on our podcast, the mayor of UCLA. Um, very influential over this podcast, mm-hmm. <laughs> actually. Yes, yes. Um, and he's going to discuss it. I think I think he's mostly going to agree with my list. Actually, we usually have deep discussions about things like this, but I feel like my list is very solid. I think he's going to agree with most of it. I'm interested, I'm interested in see his list. He's going to have too. one. He, no, no, no. He yeah. he has a list. Um, and there's a lot of stuff uh, going on around the NBA that we're going to discuss. Fun fact about Earl: he's never had a beer in his life. What is it? What stop? Never. Right? He has stuff never like tasted that. a beer. What do you mean, never tasted a beer? He has never had a beer. He's had a Stella. No, he has, he has. never ever had he's a beer had a in his he's life. We had T.J. Hushmanzada on. He claimed yes. he had never had a bagel, that coffee. That he's never crazy. tasted cream cheese. Yes, that was yeah. Those are all wild things. Wild, big wild. Yeah, big wild. But Earl coffee has, he has never had either. T.J. Hushmanzada. Yeah, yeah, had yeah. Coffee. No, Earl has had coffee, and yeah. but he has not ever had a beer. Um, we are going to talk about Baker Mayfield and his beer. We're going to talk about Dak versus Brady. Yes. Jerry Jones made a very interesting comparison, which I low-key kind of agree with. Now you agree what? In what ways? Well, we'll get to that. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Um, the Raiders, <laughs> the Raiders yes. begin on Hard Knocks. Woo! It is finally here. The Hot gift of content. Fire. Thank you. Mm. I. What does he say? I don't. I'm not interested Who? in nightmares. What is the quote? I can't get it. I, can't it's it's get really just so, it's worded so well, it's as if it was written for him. I'm not here for dreams. I'm here for nightmares. No, it's not. That's not it. That's I, exactly is it, is what it, it is. I'm not, I'm not here for. All right, all right. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like it's like I'm not interested in, but interested is a big word. It you, you want the quote to the T C? Yeah, because the, float, the, the okay. quote is important as <laughs> it is. As Somebody find the quote to the T-Z. Thank you. I'm not, I'm really not into dreams anymore, okay? I'm into nightmares. I'm into nightmares. Okay, yeah. The being first part of it is dream, not yeah. as being crucial as nightmares. being into nightmares. It's yeah. just that's pretty. Hard. It's just bleeping gangster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah except yeah. for it's coming from John Gruden, so you know it, it's, it's not. It's just it's made for just TV. Bar. But I just want a shirt that says I'm into nightmares. Ah. He took that. Chucky must have said that in a movie, and he just oh my gosh. it. sounds Chats like play. a movie line. It's he really good. Play. So yeah. I hope we get more of that tonight. And I don't want to see in the bottom of Antonio Brown's feet ever Ooh, again. I want to see the top of him exactly. You gotta inspect all angles. I, I don't. I'm not interested. In, I'm not a big foot person. We've been over this. I mean, you decided to put your uh, clomper yes. up on the I was going to wear my sandals. Disrespectfully. Yeah, but you, no, but, but we had to be fancy today. Yeah, for the, Earl's for here, so it's like Jay season. You know what I mean? Yeah, you no, know, he's Earl he's gonna bring yeah. some heat in here, and he would have yeah. given you a very hard time for yeah, wearing your toes course. out. Yeah, not into toes either. Uh, culture report. Drake. 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 It's just Drake. It's just Drake. Drake pulled a Jordan and just re-released some stuff we've already seen. He's a care package. He let and, everybody have a care package before college. But I'm know. here for it. I'm yeah, here for yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was a good listen. Sound like Drake. So we'll talk Drake. about that too. And um, you know, Jim Jim Harbaugh he, he eats steaks and drinks milk with them, and he also doesn't think that you should sit out of bowl games. It don't matter. So we'll discuss that too. <laughs> but let's get started on our 100th episode with Earl Watson. Hey. All right, Earl Watson is back. Hey, my fiance and uh, NBA legend, thirteen-year NBA veteran. First guest for Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Yes, which is very relevant. Was I? Yes, very oh, first, wow. very first guest. We was in here. We had these white walls, and it was like yeah, insane. It's, it's, it's evolved here. a little bit, and it's yeah. our hundredth episode, so it was appropriate that we have you back yeah, on. Keep it in the family. And I'm uh, back every ninety-nine. No, 
<laughs> You've been on. Like, like, this is the third four time. Times. Third, it might be four. four this. I'm back every 36. It's maybe the fourth <laughs> time. So like, one every one, one every 25 episodes. That seems fair. L.A. traffic. Come yeah, on. we got exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so well, let's start with something that we'll probably argue about, um, which I think we've probably had this conversation before. But there's a list. I'm not exactly even sure where it originated, but someone put this list out yesterday of the top 50 greatest rappers of all time. And you, you've seen this. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. You know, I'm assuming, <laughs> I uh, based like off that. of how I know you, I'm assuming that you disagree with most that's on this list. Someone has to claim the list. Most well, people know. Yeah, it's, it's got 50-50 in it, entertainment. Entertainment is guys um, try to be this like, I mean, he's doing the right things to get spoken about. So. Well, well it's list season because yeah, yeah, it's exactly. August and it's kind of like a slow time for sports right. and still baseball regular season. There's no basketball. Free agency's over. Football hasn't really officially started even though now it just started. List season. And so it's list season, yes. Yeah. And they've got the whole internet flipping out. They're, we'll just do their top five because we don't have time to go through all of this. But yeah. the top, it's wrong, the top five. But it's Jay-Z, Nas, Joe Budden. <laughs> okay, keep going. Keep reading. Styles P and Black Thought is rounds up his top five rappers of all time. Now, but, let's talk about the variables in a rapper, right? Because there's multiple things that go into someone rapping. One of the main things is spitting. Right, so like that's why it's like <laughs> Black Thought and all those other people. Like you know, could possibly be in the top five. So someone actually claimed his list. I mean, that, that person, yeah. I mean, he's out here. Uh, it's a real person. I mean, ours probably got more heat than when he put it out, but uh, but yeah, yeah. Okay, it wasn't our creation. Right. Okay. Okay. So so we decided to do just top five for time purposes. Okay. That is, that is my top five. I will read it for everyone. Number one. Earl C enjoys top five. Tupac. List. I don't think he's gonna have. I real. I am gonna. You haven't said anything yet, but I think you're gonna agree with most of it. I'll probably you're, be wrong. You're telling your fiance that you think you're, he's gonna agree with something before he's even said anything. Mm -hmm. Do you see the plot problem in that? T Tupac, Wheezy, <laughs> Jay Z, Biggie, Kanye, <laughs> Six Man's J Cole, and I know he's gonna have a problem with this, but I have to do it anyway because I thought long and hard about should I put a female on top in the top five. Right. But my top five, like my the first female that I would put in my top fifty would be Lil Kim, and mm -hmm. there are if we're just going off rappers, like you know we all about equality, right, okay? Of course, of course. Then I can't put her above a lot of other people on the list. So I have to shout out Cardi B, and that's all I'm gonna say. What is your top five? C Cardi B's tough. I mean, for me, like top five rappers, um, it's it's like top five basketball players. Okay. Right? The greatest skilled players aren't the best players in the game. Mm, like, who's the best facts. skilled in the NBA right now? I'm going to say Kyrie. Okay. Right? Yeah. Is, he, is he the best player in the NBA? No. 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 But he's he's good enough, right? right? He's great enough. So, for me, top five rappers, I don't have a top five. Like, I don't. It's like mood. Like, yeah, and that's why I think it's being discussed you know so I mean? much like, because it's so it's so based off of a what your style is. Right. Like you might feel like Common should be in the top five or uh, Most Deaf. Like you yeah. you that could be your vibe. Or you yeah. feel like you know Snoop or Dr. Dre or a lot of people are yelling or, about Eminem. Or M if, if, you, if you talk about skill, Eminem is definitely beyond. Yeah. yeah. If you talk about like you know uh, knowledge and depth. You got to put Nas and, and and Tupac in a separate category for culture. You know, if, right. you, talk, if you talk about for me, like if I really want to feel inspired, I'm, I got to put on some Jay-Z. Mm. I got to put on some Drake. Mm. Like I got to put on like, you know, somebody who can like make my mind start thinking inspirational business movement, just growth outside of the hood. If you talk about like creativity, Kanye. Like, I got to listen to some Kanye. If right. I want to go straight, if I'm about to go who, I'm going to put on some T.I. I'm going to put on some Lil bring Wayne. Bring him out, bring him out, Right? Bring I'm going to put on some N.W.A., that mm. entire group. Right? I'm going to put it all on. And, you know, if I really got some problems... I'm throwing on Young Jeezy. I know I'm going straight to jail. <laughs> like, like, young Jeezy. You put on some Young Jeezy, some A Ball MJG. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to get you, on it's gonna oh, get yeah, you crazy yeah. amped. And you talk about old school West Coast, yeah. who's really a lyricist and beyond skill, the DLC. Like, I got to put on the formula. Ooh. Like, I got to listen to him. He's legendary. Like, injury is the only thing that stopped him. Like, car True. crash, right? True. And then you got to, you know, DJ Quick. Like, you know, it's just, it's so many people, like, 
You know, even Twister is cold. Like, he's cold. He he's a cold lyricist. And if you want to take it really old school, you talk about, like, dickies and T-shirts. You got to go Scarface. Oh, okay. That's close. Where you from? Uh, <laughs> no, I, no, like, I, I mean, like... You said go old school. Old school. I was like, so, I okay, so, so, like, so the problem, t-shirts. like, oh, is, the know. problem with most of these lists is that the, what is the criteria? Like, when we do sports lists, like you said, basketball, right. like, who's the greatest of all time? Are you talking about... Can't forget Outkast. Biggest winners? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, Andre 3000. 3, 3, he's 3, at 17. And Big Boy. Like, we're talking lyrics, Andre 3000 is my top five. Yeah, you just... you just So, it's I don't have a top five. I have a mood. Like, whatever mood I'm in, that's... What mood you in right now? Uh, I'm in an obedient mood. You know oh, what I mean? What you, on, what you put on for you know obedience? Uh, oh, that's, that's old school R&B. You know what I mean? Okay, that's, okay, you know, okay. obedient, you know. Okay, but I'm okay. leaving here. I'm going to the gym. I'm going to probably throw on some... You know, I was listening to the DLC on the way over here. You know what I mean? Honestly, so when I leave and go to the gym, I don't know. I might put on Lil Wayne. Because Lil Wayne, to me, is like... one of the, He changed rap to me as far as just releasing free music. Yeah. Like, just releasing it. Mm-hmm. And then if you really want to go, like, business, you can't forget, like, Master P. Yeah. Like, his innovation. No limit. Like, how he continued to build, and he's continuing to build, like, Puffy, like, the entire movement. Right. It's just Dr. Dre. Like, it's just, you can't, it's no top five in rap. It's like, it's no that's top what, five in basketball. But that's why everyone keeps debating it. So, for me, it was like, how many times have I been emotionally moved by some of this rapper's art, right? Because mm-hmm. music is art, really. Right. And, you know, I took a, you know, art appreciation course, course in philosophy, art yeah. philosophy, my senior year of college, it was the hardest class I ever took. But that's what it's all about, right? Like, art is supposed to move you, right. and that's what you're talking about, move. If you're talking about move, and you're talking about dancing, then you gotta go, like, E-40, Mac Dre. Woo! You know, you said like, it. You that's know, on Howler's if, list. If you, if you wanna move, like, so you, I'm yeah, just saying, true. hip-hop can't be put in a box. Like, it's no... Sorry, okay. high fever. You can't like you can't you can't put hip hop in a box, man. Like yeah, it's it's so big. Like it, it evolves bigger than ch- checking boxes and like put in categories. Like yeah, it's, it's too intricate. It's like there should be like a, a rap icon top five list, a lyricist top list, a song creator top list. Because Kanye should be in the top of a song I creator. I don't, I don't think Tupac and Biggie should be in anyone's conversation. They're legends. They're like yeah, you know, one of the. They're they're iconic pioneers. To the don't even extent. don't even rate them. They're beyond numbers. They're okay. like I'm, I'm gonna tell this 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 story. I'm 1997. I'm coming straight from the hood in Kansas City. I'm going on campus at UCLA. I'm thinking I'm about to have complete culture shock. Mm-hmm. Everyone was blasting out of their dorm rooms. All eyes on me. Woo. I was totally shocked. Mm. I've never seen so many non-black people listen to rap in my life. It like yeah. blew my mind. That's when I knew how big rap was. Because in the hood, you're like almost in this bubble and you really think you're the only one that can connect to these lyrics. And it's right. not right, true. Right, right, right. And you see other people connecting. And from that moment on, I knew like my idea of Tupac being a goat was on point. You right, know, so right, right. rap is too big. Yeah, that's why I think a lot of people are mad about Eminem, too. Um, all right, so there's something else that's being discussed uh, as far as the list goes. Mm-hmm. Is the NBA put out their top, their all-decade team, Ooh. right? Now, the first team, first team all-decade was James Harden, LeBron, Steph Curry, um, Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant yeah. and Kawhi Leonard. Mm-hmm. Do, you have any, do you have any problems with those? Um, I think those are all great players, but still, uh, most of them are still evolving. So it's two thousand. It's the the parameters for this list was two thousand, ba- basically two thousand ten, two thousand twenty. Right now, what everyone was flipping out about was the third team, which had Lamarcus Aldridge, uh, Dwayne Wade, Kobe, <laughs> and Paul George, and I'm missing one other one. Chris like, Paul. It's only two debatable yeah. who should be on the third team. No, 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 Giannis. I'm sorry. Yeah, Chris who? Paul's on the second team. On that third team, you can't have D Wade and Kobe on the third team. Okay, yeah. So that's why everyone right. was was freaking out. Right. Now they're they're arguing that Kobe was sort of on a decline at that point in his career. I mean, Fair argument. for the decade, he averaged 24.7 points, 5.1 rebounds, and 4.8 assists per Hell game. Hell of a decline. <laughs> so I know. seven All Stars. I mean, it's, it's essentially equivalent to what KD. I mean. What KD and well, a lot more points per game than Kawhi, but obviously right. that's, that's not Kawhi's game. It's too much Kobe shade. Like, yeah, okay, where, so that's where, what I'm asking. What is, what is, where is this Kobe shade coming from? I, I, I'm not sure where it's coming from. Maybe, okay. maybe because he missed, he missed like the social media generation. Like, where, I, where I is agree. all this shade coming from? I agree with you. Kobe shade was a thing a couple summers ago when LeBron was coming here, but this is just an NBA article getting put out. 
by the numbers. By and someone who's never guarded Kobe. At that point in time, based on the people in the top 10, it's like, it's a compliment that Kobe is in this because he was on his way out during this decade. And he had numbers to, to prove it. So I don't think it's as egregious if you're looking at the rest of these numbers here. But, yeah, Kobe the deserves num- his flowers. Num- num- numbers never tell us the full story. True. True. Like, numbers don't tell the story. I say this all the time. Okay, so you can put it like this, since we talk about list, right? Who would you be most afraid of at the end of the game situation? Would they have that? You have to play defense. There's no help. Who would you be most afraid of in that list? Yeah, I mean, Kobe No, Bryan. no, no, no. Who? Who? Oh, me? Yeah, you got to sit down. You got to guard. Who I mean, are you most afraid of? Like, damn, like... This is like yeah, like LeBron games on the James. line. Games on the line. LeBron yeah, James. You, no, you, you'd Kobe, be more afraid of LeBron than you Kobe, are Kobe Wade, and then LeBron in that order. <clears throat> Kobe Wade, then LeBron. Game on the line. Yes. Game on the line. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. I'm Matter of fact, it's your, it, you're the teammate. Who you want to take the last shot in that entire list? Kobe. So how's he third team? Like I mean, for real, like like you got to think about it. like for me. I say this all the time. We we would be in huddles, right? And we facing the Lakers, and you get to a huddle. Like the the game, the NBA game is. Is it just flows into the last three minutes of a game. Mm-hmm. If you're a true basketball artist and you love the basketball, just the plays, the diagrams, the nuances of the game, you love the last three three minutes of a game. That's when the game slows down as a player. That's when you get really excited and the adrenaline goes to the highest point. Mm-hmm. So you would get in that huddle, and if you up one, if you up two, if you need a stop or if it's a big play defensively you have to make, you'll get to your coach and you'll be like, look, we cannot let Kobe catch the f***ing ball. Like, he can't catch it. If he catches it, we have to run two at him. I would rather get beat by Derek Fisher mm. or another player than to let Kobe Bryant hit that shot. Right. That's why Derek Fisher has so many monumental shots because teams made sure Kobe couldn't touch it. Robert Ory as well. Right? Right, teams made yeah. sure. So, like, when you get in that game, it's, it's it's different with him because he's been in the gym since 2 p.m. making a 1,000 mm. shots before the first team bus even gets there at 4.30. And that's just in the afternoon. Like, knowing Kobe the way I know Kobe, he woke up at 5 to make another 500 to 1,000, went to the shoot-around, went home in his chopper, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> took, took a nap, <laughs> took his chopper to Staples, <sighs> and then made another thousand. And, and you get in layup lines, you get there early, you look down at the other end of the court, you want to see who's out there working out, and you realize, damn, Kobe's never out here. So it's like, it's like a, a mental, like kind of like a mental trick he does on other players. He basically mind fucks you. Like, yo, he didn't take any shots before the game, and he comes out and just gave you sixty. Right, it's 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 all psychological warfare with Kobe. Because he's the Mamba. Because it's just it's just the way he is. But like okay. you know, so like for me, it's like that list is the list. It's obviously someone that's never defended Kobe. I would love to see the players list. Like okay, well let's see what their list is. I don't even remember the last ten years. But like you know, 2010 to 20, I don't remember. All I know is whenever 24 steps on the court, he is a danger. So looking at the all decade team first team, who co- who's Kobe replacing? It's Steph Curry, one one of the five you choose. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm replacing him. I'm replacing James Harden with him. Yes, with yeah, I like that. Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't think any player on that first five would be like disappointed in placing Kobe, yeah, like Kobe re- him, being yeah. replaced by yeah. Kobe. None of those players would feel slighted if Kobe was on that list because they understand they understand True. the respect that players have for Kobe. This Kobe Shay not even being in the, the goat debate to me is crazy. Yeah, Kobe is really never is brought, he's cra- never brought up. That is in the, in crazy. The, I don't I don't know what this is, but Tim it, Duncan is also never brought up, but it's Tim Duncan. Like he's, with, he's the quietest. There's so many people star. that aren't brought up in this argument, but I mean, there's a part of a, a crucial hate. part of a dynasty, but, but Kobe is never well, brought up in that conversation. Why? Yeah. I, I don't know why. I don't I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't. It's, I don't know. Maybe Kobe wasn't nice to people in interviews. You know what I think? <laughs> I that, don't know. That might okay. be part of it, yeah. his persona. But I also think there might be a little bit of when Kobe first came in the league, he was kind of compared to Jordan. So he was kind of like diet Jordan. Right. So a lot of people look at Kobe's career like he, he was he was great, but he wasn't as good as Jordan. So it, he just he gets like put under whatever right. is next and different than Jordan, which would be LeBron. And also within this last decade, stars have to kiss up to media to get respect 
and get airplay and get like talking about and Kobe came from the generation where he just had to go out there and ball on the court. He wasn't out, he wasn't kissing nobody's ass to people to say he was the goat. Uh, I've said this before: for a 17 year old to be drafted to the Lakers, and the mentality you have to have to succeed in Los Angeles under pressure, win championships, be criticized. Not having social media to defend yourself. Whatever the paper is printed, it is printed, it is read. Whatever is said on TV, it is said. You don't have social media, you don't have Twitter, you don't have Instagram to say, this is my narrative. Kobe survived that. I think it's easier now to survive those challenges mm. because I can quickly jump on social media and say my narrative. I can quickly tweet back. I can quickly put people around me to get my word out beyond the press. Right. Like Kobe survived that in Los Angeles and brought championships home doing it mm. while creating a legacy that he has to be mentioned in that GOAT debate. Like this, this, this shit has to stop. Like, and like, the news cycle. I'm starting to campaign. Flip over, didn't flip like, over the way that it does now too. It's, so it's so hashtag. It's, for Kobe. it's hashtag. This shit has to stop. Oh like, you know what I mean? That, that that campaign is out there. It's Kobe. We don't even say his last name. It's but, just but, Kobe. But he's not. He's not the. He's not the goat. Yeah. But he should be in the goat conversation. Stop. No, it's, no. I mean, it's Michael. But <laughs> another hashtag that is going on right now is Free Mellow. Yes. So. Carmelo Anthony has this Great very segue. intense Just. reputation. Just I, it, like there's a narrative mm -hmm. around Carmelo Anthony that yeah. he didn't take care of his body. Mm -hmm. He didn't evolve with the game. He's not a good teammate. He's not a uh, me, me, me guy. To me guy, whatever. Like all very kind of a selfish narrative around Carmelo Anthony. Where does that come from, first of all? And do you think that Melo should be on a team next year? Who, who Who's the one superstar in basketball that you can say is not a me guy? Come on now, LeBron James. Is he? he he's leading an assist. Steph, I would say Steph Curry is not a me guy. You don't, you guys, you guys think you can be a superstar and not be a me guy? I, okay, that's a different question. But we're talking about mentality, first thought. LeBron's well, okay, so, no, 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 criticized so the about passing. Guy, the me guy, when you say a me guy, it doesn't mean that you're not selfish and you're not like inherently selfish trying to be great. The 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 me guy thing is I would rather get forty and we lose. As Chauncey said, thirty he was too obsessed with getting trying to score thirty points. That is That's perception. Right. Okay. Okay. That's that that that's perception. And and, and what's crazy is when Chauncey came into the league, he was perceived to be a player who wanted to score more than be a point guard. Mm. Which is why he came off the bench and was traded so many times, and it came off the bench behind Terrell Brandon. Oof. And then when Terrell Brandon gets hurt in Minnesota, he becomes a starter, and he figured it out. So, like, it's a process for every player. True. Like, I was Melo's teammate in Denver. I never felt like Melo was a me guy. I felt like Melo was trying to figure it out. Mm. He immediately got his team into the playoffs, he won a national championship in Syracuse. So you can't tell me he's not a winner. Right. Right. The only problem he had is navigating his career. And this is where players have to be very careful. If you continue to be the lead guy or the other guy on a team or in a program that doesn't win, you quickly get labeled as no value to your teams moving forward. Because mm. he stayed on teams that wasn't really good enough and he had to do all the scoring because the roster wasn't put together with another superstar. Right. As he continued to age, like Allen Iverson, he's now seen as a guy that can't help my team mm. because all he does is score. And I am afraid, as a general manager, as a coach, to have a conversation with him and say, you need to evolve into this, which is not the main score. Because I don't want that confrontation. Right. So when you have NBA players and you have superstars, the hardest thing to do is to tell them the truth. That's why Ooh. Hubie Brown says the greatest sin you can ever make to a player is to tell them a lie on and off the court. And it's difficult. A lot of coaches don't have those open conversations. They're like, yeah, keep scoring, good job, keep playing. They go back into the office and be like, shit, he never passes. Tell them. Mm. 
How many coaches had a chance to tell him? How many coaches have he played for? Why didn't they say, this is how you become a player in this league and play the right way, win the right way, and have longevity in this league? I had one early, UB Brown. Then I had another one later. You know, like you just you just got Jerry Sloan. You just got to you, you're lucky and you're blessed if you have those in your career. But how many of those coaches still exist? Pop, yeah. Doc Rivers, like Kyrie kind of said the same thing. Like, I wish our roles were defined. He said it in Boston. Yeah. Melo said the same thing in his interview. I kept asking what is needed of me mm. and no one never really told me. So you just kind of like, instead of dealing with it in confrontation, one-on-one, like two men, they just kind of like put you away. Well, how, how can he get back into the NBA and be effective if there are no coaches brave enough to coach him? I don't think, I don't think Melo fits the Lakers, right? That whole situation is transit. We don't know yeah. what's going to happen. Right. Mm. I think he fits Doc Rivers. Mm. I think he fits... Coach Popovich, a coach that's going to say, look, I'm going to sit you down. You're going to respect me. This is what I need. This is all I need. But on the other end, you're going to have to rebound. You're going to have to play defense. You're going to have to maybe, you know, learn how to switch out and guard ones, twos, and threes. And you're going to be the greatest offensive version of Draymond Green. Right? Because you got to wow. respect, I got to respect your shot. But you better learn to play, man. Wow. And here's the video, and here's the the blueprint to it. We're gonna watch film right here. Instead of the one dribble pull up, when the ball reverses to you at the top of the key, we're not doing that. You're gonna take it. You're gonna drive, get a piece of the paint, and make a play for the weak side, or get to the rim and get fouled. This is the only way you're going to play here, and this is how you're gonna help us do something special. Melo will do it. He's one of my. It's a list of teammates, like greatest teammates. He's one of my favorite teammates ever. Wow. He's a gym rat. He loves the hoop. He doesn't care. You can talk crazy to him. He'll laugh. He doesn't have like that backlash of hatred. He just laughs it off. He's very highly spirited. Melo is legit. Wow. So someone else is getting a little criticism right now is LeBron for lots of different reasons. David Griffin came out last week. He's kind of since backed off of his comments, but basically... You know, he, he said LeBron isn't about winning anymore, which isn't really that dramatic when you think about it. Like, when you come to L.A. to play for the Lakers at the twilight of your career in a situation where you're going to be under a lot of pressure, it seems like that's that's not that's not what you want to hear if you're a Lakers fan, obviously. Right. But it also is kind of obvious. Like, you're, you're filming Space Jam 2 right now. It's kind of, kind of got a lot going on. What did you make of what David Griffin had to say about LeBron? Um, I think he kind of, once again, his perspective, right? Mm-hmm. He's, he's, his perspective is he feels like LeBron is at the end of his career and he took LeBron quotes of saying, I have nothing else to prove. Like, you know, I've proved everything. And he took it and maybe he felt like he's not putting emphasis on winning because he's seen LeBron's commitment elsewhere. How LeBron came back to Cleveland and basically promised a championship. How LeBron went to Miami and promised like multiple championships. And that promise wasn't, I guess, verbally announced by LeBron. To yeah, sure. He didn't like, say it when he came to LA. Like, I don't know. Did he say it? Did he not no. say it? Like, no. I don't know. You know, Magic so, was talking for him. Ma- Magic was saying it. Like, so, so yeah. I don't, maybe that's the perspective. But if you are lucky enough to represent any sport in Los Angeles on any level, you have to take that to heart. It's not a lot of cities like L.A. Mm. L.A. basketball is legendary, right? We have Clippers, two Clippers who are from Los Angeles are finally home representing L.A. basketball. Yeah. We have three others who decided to creatively, it happened through the universe, however, they represent the Rockets. You have James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Tyson Chandler, mm. three L.A. kids. Now they represent the Rockets. That's like L.A. South, right? So you have this love for basketball here, this infinity for basketball. Like you have to respect that and take that on another level and carry that shield because this city will quickly turn on you. This city will quickly turn on you. So you have to respect it. And I think he values that. I just think that perspective is from someone who's closer to him than we are. But the Lakers haven't done anything, so having LeBron James, or in in a very long time, having LeBron James in itself feels like 
a gift from the universe for for the basketball universe for the Lakers to even have someone like LeBron James. Obviously, a culture of all stars after all stars. So I don't think he has anything to prove. I don't think he needs to win a championship. The, the man's mentality is to win a championship because he's out there playing. That's LeBron James. Takes takes us back to the Kobe conversation. Whenever Kobe stepped on a court, he always has something to prove. Right, last game he had sixty. He could have walked off with a cool eighteen and would have been <laughs> celebrated. He had sixty. He tears his Achilles, he shoots his free throw. Mm. Walks off the court by himself, wasn't carried. You know, K- KD right is here. tough. KD is a tough player. KD showed how that injury really hurts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now imagine KD got up, shot his free throws, or if he got fouled and then walked off the court. That is a difficult thing to do. Yeah. So anytime you step on the court, you have something to prove. Because you know why? Because the, the other person facing you cannot wait for your downfall Mm. players can't wait to see LeBron start to decline so they can get some get back you know what I mean we're gonna get some get back I'm just waiting and I've seen it happen time and time again as you get older these younger players who you torched they can't wait for you to fall off so they can just you know put you to sleep what about the you're very involved in grassroots basketball so you know every element uh, from playing to coaching to uh, organizing AAU and grassroots basketball. What do you make of the criticism that LeBron got last week about playing with his, his son, not playing with his son, but being out there in the layup line right. and you know a- everything that happened with LeBron and that criticism. I'm, I'm very disappointed. I wish he would have jumped over like three kids. <laughs> like just, <laughs> just line them up, just jump over and like, uh, bring it yeah. home. You know what I mean? like, yeah. I'm very disappointed. You really know what I mean? like, yeah, yeah, like really, really change some kids' lives, right? You know what I mean? Like, just change their lives <laughs> virally. That's done by LeBron James. Oh, hey, oh, hey look, man, hey, look. There's so many former and current players involved in grassroots basketball from coaching to sponsoring to showing up to games Mm -hmm. to cussing out referees like Matt just got kicked out of the game you know (laughs) and then and then even leave he just was standing in the doorway so (laughs) he was really deboing a referee like I'm not leaving the gym I'm coaching from the doorway right you know it's just it's just hilarious but that it's been you're not changing that that's been the the underground world of of grassroots basketball involvement because we love basketball players love hoop you know on every level i don't see anything wrong with lebron doing the dunks being in the layup lines uh maybe like you know running on the court because i would feel some type of way if i was on the other team and right. if they keep scoring and keep running on the court like yeah. i mean i might be too small at that time but we're gonna have to square up right. like you know keep running on the court celebrating LeBron losing fans you know what i mean yeah, yeah yeah you know what i mean like <laughs> The other team might feel some type of way, but he does a great job to me making sure that he, the optics is he really shows every team around him love. Right. Like even dapping up the other team, even right. cheering for kids who are not on his team. Like he does a great job of doing that. So, you know, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's what is it, low, it's high key weak. You know, yeah, yeah. like it's high key week. You know, yeah. it's high key week to even criticize that. Like, let them change. Like, I wish when I was in AAU battle grassroots, Michael Jordan was doing dunks. Ooh, on the other right. end. Dunk what? Me. What? In I would have flipped my jerseys and joined the team. Like, yo, how can I get on y'all team? You know, like, right. you know, I wish that happened. Right. Do you think it's there's something to it's just LeBron and this is the world that we live in where everything gets criticized and everything gets overanalyzed and he's a superstar and everybody has an opinion or do you think it's really truly that people don't understand the culture of not just basketball but especially grassroots basketball? I said this before people don't understand the culture of grassroots basketball the way they criticize LeVar. Yeah. Mm. Like you know we went this weekend to one of the tournaments I had and you have parents yelling cussing cheering fights mm-hmm. it's just it's just, a, it's just a part of the game right. like you know basketball like grassroots basketball is a platform for kids who are economically challenged this is their way to change their lives they're mm-hmm. willing to fight for it families are willing to give whatever they have for it mm. to make sure they have a chance for a free education and a chance to get a good career beyond basketball they're fighting with everything they have. So you don't understand, you have to understand the 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 position they come from, where they come from, the economic challenges they come from, not even to mention like the social issues. So it's right. it's just different. It's it's the realest thing ever. I love it.
I love it too. Um, all right, so let's go down to Houston. Someone that you know very well, Russell Westbrook, who's joined the Rockets. I I'm actually very optimistic for them this year, and I am rooting for them this year. I just want to see Westbrook win a championship. But how do you think that fits? Because you know him well, and you know that team very well. And a lot of people are skeptical of how Harden and Westbrook are really going to play together. My question is more on the coaching side. How is it going to work mm. down down the line late in the season, playoff time? But how do you think that's all going to play out? I think Tyson Chandler is there to bridge that gap. Mm. You know, I think Russ is going to be dynamic. If you remember the old, older OKC teams when James was on that team, KD played the three, Russ played the two, James played the one. James did a lot of playmaking mm. off the pick and roll, and Russ got off the ball, which I think he's dynamic off the ball, right? He's more of a threat when he catches it at half court and attacks versus bringing it up, trying to make a play, right? right? And then you really start to evolve with it. When you have two superstars and you have a superstar such as Russ, there's only certain people in the league that you are willing to get off the ball for. Either someone who's a vet, who you feel like mentored you, if they're of equal age, it has to be someone that you respect their game and you go back with. And James is that person. He right. respects him. They go back to high school. Mm. They have a, a relationship. They're excited. They're friends beyond the court. They're family. Right. Right? The only challenge I see for the Rockets is not offensively because you're going to get you should get 8 to 11 free throws from Russ a game 8 to 11 free throws from James a game it's going to be a game where they both get 15 to 20 maybe each it's going to be crazy right Right. the way they attack the rim the only problem I see is defensively that's always been the Achilles heel for the Rockets defensively how can they get a stop that's when P.J. Tucker and Tyson Chandler is going to be key but can you entice Russell Westbrook to play on the other end of the ball because he's going to be less offensively involved right. with the load? If Russ focuses to be one of the best defenders in the league, he will be first team all defense because he is an amazing on the ball defender. Amazing beyond. That's going to be the biggest challenge. What do you say to people when he says he can play off the ball and you're saying he can play off the ball? What do you say to people who criticize his three-point shooting? Because in a lot of people's minds, playing off the ball means that you can catch and shoot a three, especially with the Rockets' right. you know, offensive system. The hardest thing to do in the NBA is to close out and keep your defender in front, even if he is a non-shooter. If he's a shooter, it's more difficult. Imagine being in, we call it the nail, but imagine being at the free throw line and the center of the free throw line is a nail on every court, right? Any any court or any age you go to, unless you know the court is not made out of wood. If right. it's some other stuff, it's not a nail. All weak side defense has to start there. Imagine James coming down, getting a piece of the paint, kicking it out to the weak side, and now you have to make an attempt to close out the rust on a catch with momentum attacking the basket. Whether you close out short because you don't think he can shoot or you close out to touch, he is going to beat you to the paint. True. And that's where you are going to get dunks, lobs, free throws, corner threes. Mm. He doesn't have to be a great shooter. He has to be a great corner shooter, three-point shooter, right? Yeah. yeah. If he becomes a great corner three-point shooter like P.J. Tucker has become, mm-hmm. then you have a serious problem. So they're going to find ways to kind of you know, create it and build it, but you have to really – and Russ is smart enough to realize, like, I got to get to the basket because if not, James can tell him, and he respects that. Right. You know, he's going to understand and respect that Tyson's going to tell him. The coaches is going to just, you know, reconfirm what they said. So I think they're going to be pace setters in the West just because I feel like to get in the best rhythm, they're going to have to learn to play with each other at a high level during the regular season. How does that end up in the playoffs? Because we're talking about two people that have – found early exits in the playoff and if if we're talking about Westbrook and then Harden who has just ran out of steam near the end of the NBA season. I don't I don't I don't think it would be this this honeymoon like or this this challenging beginning relationship of them trying to figure it out. They they've been playing they played together all last summer at UCLA. They like True. like like they've been playing together. Like yeah. this is not nothing new. Okay. Like they've been friends for 
maybe 10, 15 years now, they play together in Pango's All-American camp. Like, they know each other's game. I think the the biggest challenge is going to be, on the, like I said all the time, on the other end. So when you really, like, start to dig deep and think about the levels of this, can James Harden teach Russell how to be a better pick-and-roll player? To where he's creating shots, he's manipulating pick and rolls, he's finding the open man, he's manipulating the game, which I think James is the James is the best at doing it at his at his position. And then can Russ influence James to be a better defender? Mm. So right, they can. It's like the perfect marriage. They need each other. Yeah. Like when I played with Baron at UCLA, and we both was in the backcourt. I learned a lot from him in practice. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, damn, that's how he come off a of pick and roll. That's how he makes that pass. And on the other end, I think he learned from me defensively. So we learned from each other, and we started to pick it up and started putting it, putting you know each other's like games into our game. You know, whether it's the mindset, whether it's how to run a pick and roll, whether it's how to like drop a bounce pass or how to get in there and slow down. Like we started to pick it up from each other and became better. You have the all time steals record at UCLA, right? Uh, Maybe. I think so. Yeah. I think you have that. And I think Jordan Canada has it. Jordan? For yeah, for a, sure. She's, for, she looks uh, like eight a game now in the WNBA. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned PJ a couple times. You are a sneakerhead. You have a very extensive sneaker collection. I'm wearing some J's that you got me. So now I have a nice sneaker collection. Thanks, babe. And PJ is notorious. We wanted to ask you, because you always mention PJ has a crazy sneaker collection. It's kind of like, it's almost obnoxious. Like he takes up other people's lockers with all his shoes. Who do you think has the best shoe game in the league? It's PJ Tucker. It's not even close. PJ PJ would have two lockers full of shoes. Well, you can't do that. You shouldn't be allowed to do that. Like feel to the top. (laughs) I'd be like, PJ, you got to take some of this shit home, bro. Like, it's just <laughs> shoes just flooding out the locker, right? It's like a photo shoot. And he he is, he just loves shoes. It's just his, his, it's his thing. But the original sneakerhead that I remember from Slam Magazine, you know, being in Kansas City, you get, you get Slam, you get to right. see around. We didn't have social media, so whoever mm-hmm. made it, Diaries was like, it was cold, right? Yeah. Like, you know, like, oh, man, he has a diary. It was Ray Young. Ray Young, who went to UCLA, who's from Oakland. He was the original sneakerhead. Ray, Ray Young. Young. Look up Ray Young slam like <laughs> kicks like 1996. Like you know what I mean? He was doing it way before anyone. I thought it was the dumbest thing ever. Like <laughs> I'm like, why are you collecting all these Jordans and Nikes? This is so stupid. We're trying to play Madden, bro. Like like collect Madden games. Right? He was ahead of his time. He was way ahead of his time. Beyond. Do you Jordan think that Young. that Zion has a potential to reach? Uh, I don't want to say Jordan status, but he, you know, uh, his, who he was going to sign with, what shoe company he was going to sign with was a big discussion, and he right. apparently took less money to sign with Jordan. You're a little skeptical. I think the, the thing skeptical. about it is, is he's a big, big guy. Like right. LeBron's shoes are big. You made me buy you some once. They're big shoes. <laughs> what? Lose a bet? Oh, no, she just hates on LeBron so much, I made her buy me I, some, I some bronze, you know? But his, like, shoes, yeah. his shoes are hard to get, though, yeah. so, and yeah, they're they big, are. and they're heavy. Yeah. Yeah. But And we all, obviously all saw Zion's shoe explode. So what 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 is your prediction PG for Zion's 13s. shoes? Because he is with Jordan Brand, who makes me. I think I think Jordan would do the most creativity, the most creative, you know, signature shoe for Zion because he's so unique. And I, I went to the first summer league game when Zion played. I've never seen this before in my life. Earthquake I'm, game. I'm, earth, it, it, Zion delivered an earthquake in Vegas, right? <laughs> For sure. Uh, I've seen it. I was there. I lived it. Uh, you know, I can add to it and add and create falsehoods, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so, Brian was there the game before. Mm-hmm. People went crazy, taking pictures, media, right? Game ends. LeBron stays. The Knicks come out first. New Orleans comes out second. Zion comes out last. I've never in my life felt the energy that came into that arena when he came out on the court. Mm. Every cell phone and network camera immediately focused on him. And for the first time, I saw like LeBron looking like, damn, like <laughs> the cameras are gone and this kid is here, right? So the first time they Ooh. play, I think LeBron is gonna go for 60. 
Like he's gonna let him know, like I'm not ready to give it up yet. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like this is this is gonna motivate me. And yeah. it, it was crazy. It was like 30, 40 cameras on the baseline to watch him do warm ups. And every time he shot a jumper, shot a layup, the crowd booed, like boo, wow. like dunk it. And then when he dunked it, I was like, oh shit. Like, I've never seen anyone that big and that athletic dunk with so much force and quickness. They got to think about basketball. You're either fast or quick. You can't be fast and quick. If you are, you're lucky. If mm. you're fast, quick, and strong, you're Baron Davis and, and, and Russell Westbrook, right? If you're quick, you're Darren Williams. If you're quick, you're Chris Paul. If you're athletic, you're LeBron, who is fast and athletic, not quick. Right, D. Rose is fast, athletic, strong. LeBron, fast, athletic, strong. Russ, fast, athletic, strong. Zion is quick, fast, athletic, strong. He is an Avenger. Like you know, he, he is out here like he is on something different. Like and he hasn't even got his grown man strength yet. Yeah, he's so. It growing. could be a, the wrong combination of things too early too, because he did play nine minutes in that game. He, he played nine minutes in that game, but you know, it's it's summer league. Like okay. and, and and I know that 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 staff was in Phoenix. The you know the health staff was in Phoenix. They wasn't gonna allow him to play much longer anyway. Okay, you know, because they want to make sure the body is right. They want to get him, make sure he lose a certain amount of weight, play at mm-hmm. a certain amount of weight, make sure he's good. You cannot risk injury for a player once in a generation player for summer league. You just can't. But for the time he played, what he had like four or five dunks. Yeah, it, it was it was crazy. All of them nasty. Like I, 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 yeah. I'm standing up. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell am I standing up for? Like, <laughs> it's like follow the lead. Everybody, I'm like, I'm standing up too. Like, because Thanos is in the gym. Yeah, it's, it's Thanos. Yeah. Like, like, I know, but he does not deserve a Christmas Day game. Yes, I'm yes, sorry. Does. What are you talking yes, about? Yes, he does. What do you mean? What are you talking about? What are you talking, about, are you talking right about? All right, I'll be, I'll be on my on an yeah, island with you, this one. You will watch it. I won't watch it, but I, I don't want to see Zion got, Williams got, at that. You got Zoe at the one. You got okay, Zion okay, running okay. the court. Okay, that's, yeah. You got okay. Ingram. Okay. You got all these young kids is that's high true. flying, dunking. You know, you I, I want to watch. Yeah, the Pelicans. I forgot We're what they got. Yeah, the Pelicans. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it's Taco Tuesday. Does everybody want to do their best LeBron Taco no, Tuesday? We no. no, we don't no. want to do it. No. Let's do it. No, we don't. You know what I'm doing? The culture says no to that. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. I'm saying? glad you had to say that. Yeah, my you culture. Have to say that. My culture Thank says you. no. Yes. No. To tell LeBron no, no more. Taco Tuesday. No mas. <laughs> yeah, no mas. You know, that's, that's how that goes. He had his fun with it, though. We had yeah. Taco Monday last night. Yeah, yeah, I just can't take your shirt seriously anymore. <laughs> like, I, I, like, it's just, I just can't I'm do it. I'm actually surprised we made it this far through the podcast. With, with, uh, no, I, I didn't, I didn't want to bring it up. You know what I mean? It's like one of those things where like you have like a It's our 100th awkward, podcast, nice, as you okay. know. I see. And we're, we're being classy casual. Like, I... I don't even want to take it to where my mind is going right now. Why? Because I don't. Why? Because I don't. Like, it's, okay, I'm going to take it there. It reminds me of, like, Dumb and Dumber. It which is, is Dumb and Dumber. Which is, it is? Yeah. yeah. So, who's who? One's Dumb, one's Dumb. Yeah. I'd probably be Dumber. Well, yeah. What are the names? <laughs> I'd probably be Dumber. What are the fair. names? I, I don't remember Lloyd. the movie. Lloyd, Lloyd and Lloyd. Harry and Lloyd. Harry and Lloyd. Harry and Lloyd. Oh, you guys have yeah. seen the song? Which one? The most annoying song in the yes. world? Yes. Uh, the most my- annoying song. No, 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 no. Wait till I leave. Like, I, I'm not saying don't do not do it now, but are you going to sing the song? No, I know we you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world. No, I don't. Like, but I just want to know. <laughs> I didn't take the breath I needed. So, so that's your fault. I need a breath. That's, I needed. that's not my fault. It is your fault. Well, thanks for coming in again. We always love having you in. And now Brandon is shaving his mustache. This is a new half. Okay. Yeah, just do half. Yeah. I mean, the hair is falling in the mouth. Appreciate you coming on. Though. This is so strange. <sighs> it's so weird. Yeah, I do the hair. Come on now. Come on, go all out. No, you gotta go all do out. Don't do like, it. Straight, don't straight down the line. Don't straight down the line. Don't listen to Earl. Don't listen to Earl. One, no, one big ass part. Don't do it. Straight, don't straight, do straight, it. straight down the line. Don't, you cannot pull it off. Do it. I'm telling don't. you. Don't listen to Earl. Remember volleyball? I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. No, don't do it. I'm telling you. Give me that. I'm telling you. Give it to me. You will change TV forever. Don't listen to him. He does do this to you with volleyball too. Don't listen to Earl. 100 episodes. Who needs eyebrows? Don't, don't. No, nah, girl, I can't do that. Oh, my God. I was, was going to drink a beer if you did it. <laughs> Why do you
do you do that? Do what? <laughs> why do you do that? Do what? Why do you guys I inspire like people that? to be the best I version of themselves. That. I almost took the to the head. I knew, I knew I knew you was thinking it. You know what I mean? Like I'm just trying to inspire people to be the best version of themselves. Like whatever that is, do that. Don't. <laughs> 150 right. episode. So. Appreciate you. <laughs> it's time for high key, low key. High key, low key. Okay, high key. Baker Mayfield is a dude, bro. Okay. And low key, he owns it, which I'm cool with. So Baker Mayfield chugged a beer. He yes. caught a beer first of all. Yes. Good catch. Wait. He, let's say this: If we're breaking it down, the play he was drinking a beer. Yeah, he was, just and beer. then caught a beer. Yes. Then he punctured the beer with his tooth. It looked like his canine. Yeah, if we're giving yeah. actual details. I had shark wounds, but I'm never gonna do that. Punctured the beer, and then I guess the the correct uh, mechanism to make the beer shotgun is to then open the top of it. Yes, crack the tap. While placing placing the ripped open aluminum in your mouth. Close to your mouth, yes, for less So not drippage. on, just close. Right. Okay, so it seems like a, a good way to waste a lot of beer. But, yes. you know. Uh, do you shotgun beers? I do not shotgun beers. Have you I, ever? I have never shotgunned a beer, no. Really? No, not to my knowledge, no. Yeah. Um, I'm, I wasn't a big beer person in college. Right. Um, because I was, uh, you know, I mean, obviously I'm classy. Yeah, you're a classy person, And of college beer is disgusting. And where right. I went Keystone to college, Light. it's Keystone Light. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's not, Pat it's not Blue high quality and... stuff. Yeah. yeah, the Blue Ribbon stuff, like hipsters trying to act like that beer is good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I've shotgunned a beer before because I have a lot of white friends. Yeah. And uh, I remember it was before the Syracuse Notre Dame game at MetLife. I remember throwing up in my mouth and then fighting the beer, throwing up back in the can. <laughs> And just like pushing my throw up into the can through the shotgun hole and just throwing the beer away like it was uh, it's a normal beer. That's super disgusting. Well, you but what you do. I don't know. Look, I can't, it's, I can't, it's can't shotgun, do the white bro stuff. Sh- sh- it's a dude bro. Yeah, and I can't do it. It's yeah, it's not for us, and it's a waste. It's which is the most important thing, and we don't like to waste liquor. <laughs> no, you're not gonna drink that. Okay. Yes. That's the only way someone who only drinks one thing will drink something else. Mm. Yes, if it's being you know what wasted. Saying? It's being wasted. Yeah. We're not going to waste that. No. Okay. And a lot of beer seems to come out that doesn't go directly into your into your mouth exactly. situation. Anyway, not the point. So not the point. He's he's doing dude bro stuff, mm-hmm. which is fine. Now it's a cultural thing, and right. we already know if any black quarterback did this, the reaction would be universally the same, which is that he's not qualified to be right. the. Is he quarterback face of, a franchi- face of the franchise. Right. right. Now, I have no problem with Baker being this way. And it really is not news that Baker would do something like that. Like, no. not, not shocking to zero people. Like, oh, Baker shotgun to beer at a Cleveland Indians game. Yeah. That right. sounds right. Yeah. But this is just one more thing, right? Now, if I'm being a little bit get, a, get off my lawn-y, I yeah. don't love that he's doing that during training camp. Not that I don't okay. have this idea that he right. may not partake in an adult beverage during training camp. Right. I personally wouldn't. Yeah. Um, I am a partaker of alcohol, but I'm also not an athlete. Right. And the fact is, like, in general, alcohol is not good for your body. I mean, That's Tom why Brady all the old timey videos, it's a jar with a poison face on it. <laughs> like, it's yes. not good for you. Okay. <laughs> we cartoons. all enjoy it, but it does, right. like, it's not good for you. Yeah. Okay? Tom Brady doesn't have a beer during the season. That's right. a thing. And, and right. And, like, everyone was talking about, well, you know, Tom Brady chugs a beer and Aaron Rodgers chugs, chugs a beer and nobody gets upset. It's like, yeah, all that stuff's going on in the offseason. Mm-hmm. And there's no question about how Tom Brady takes care of his body and stop comparing Tom Brady and Baker Mayfield right now. Fair. Instantaneously. Although I'm going to compare someone else to Tom <laughs> Brady in a few seconds. So, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> The point is, the point is, that's my only issue with it. Like during training camp, it's kind of like, because to me, training camp is like the sacred time, right? Where whether you're Tom Brady or you're an undrafted guy who no one's ever heard of, who is just hoping to make the practice squad, right. you're all suffering together. It's like True. this coming together of pain and suffering right. and bonding. And I think that the good teams all have an understanding of how like our training camp is run and the vets are genuinely helping the new guys. Mm -hmm. And like, it's a whole thing. And I have respect for that mainly because I've had to sit outside and do radio shows at Miami Dolphins training camps for many years. And it is a thousand 
degrees and it's the only time that I wear shorts to work and I can't imagine <laughs> being in full pads oh actually having gosh. to do physical activity Ugh. because walking up the stairs without an umbrella is enough for me. So <laughs> I have respect for it. So that's my only issue with it. Right. Like and and what I will say is obviously I'm rooting for the Browns this year. I've I've supported Baker from before he was even drafted. Yeah. They should have been starting the entire time. And I don't have any problem with it. And I, and I like that we have different personalities in the league. Like, everybody can't be Andrew Luck. All right? right? Thank God. Yeah, all right? Be... No just Andrew Luck. No. But he's a bore fest. Yeah. Okay? Wouldn't make any money. No! no. It, would not, it would not be a good product. Okay? Mm-hmm. So you need personalities. And I like that. But I will say, if the Browns are not successful this year... This is going to be one of the reasons that gets blamed for it. Nobody's going to give you the benefit of a doubt of, oh, you know, you had this injury or, oh, you know, this you had this breakdown on offense or you need to reevaluate, you know, the offensive coordinator or this position coach. Like nobody is going to give you the benefit of the doubt in that spot. No one's going to look at you like, oh, OK, well, next year, you know, you'll get a couple draft picks and make this adjustment here. You haven't earned that. Because you've never been here before. This is the first time with expectations. So if they're not successful, it's not going to be looked at in a fair way. Do you think this is going to be as serious as Boatgate with OBJ, like in, before the playoffs? Like, I don't, there's no way the severity, like, this can't be, this isn't a moment in Baker Mayfield's lineage. Mark this can't my be. words. Okay. That's Date fair. it. Write it down. Make a thingy. I mean, on episode the 100. Okay. Quick to come back to. Right. Because yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> This is what it is. I don't eyes. care. I'm not offended by it. It doesn't trigger me in any way. Right. I don't care. I don't can't stress how little I care about it. But, but if. <laughs> now, somebody who doesn't shotgun beers during training camp is Dak Prescott mm. and high key Jerry Jones said that he's the GOAT. And low key, I don't entirely disagree. Now, I am a Dak fan mm-hmm. and I think he should be paid. But Jerry was talking about Tom Brady's contract extension, which really, in reality, football contracts are so great. Like, just, just tell me how much and how long, okay? Yes. I don't need the $140 billion. Right. Okay, okay, that's a huge contract. It's Oh, it's $30 million guaranteed? Oh, so I, it's a two-year contract. Thank you. Uh, what are you talking about? Why do they always do that? It's, it's like literally a one-year deal. So anyway... That, that's, I just had to say that. No, very thank annoying. you. It needed to be said. It, it's, it's annoying. Like, yeah. just I, I wish people would stop reporting. Contracts as a whole, just very confusing. Matt Ryan to be paid two hundred and sixty million dollars. No, he's getting fifty, and it's two year deal, and they can cut him in the third year, which they'll sign him to an extension. That's none of those numbers are correct, so just calm down. But the point is, he's talking about Tom Brady's contract extension. And he said, it's the best example of what you can do with a quarterback that has leadership skills and work ethic, and Brady is all that. Dak enjoys many of the same kinds of skills, and they came from the same place in the race, being that Dak's fourth-round pick, Brady's sixth-round pick. Yep. So that's what interests me about it. He Here he is two years later, if only, if only that could happen. So he didn't exactly compare the two, but he did say they have similar qualities, which I do agree with. Yeah. I do agree with that. Now, Everyone is still barking and yapping about who should get paid first, and Zeke is saying he's not going to come back to training camp, which it's the Cowboys. Like Every year. What would a Cowboys season be without Zeke doing something at the beginning of the year? True. It's not what he not does. Not the Cowboys. It's yeah, not what exactly. he does. Yeah, it's not what he does. Yeah, no. He's on brand. So I, I think the Dak should be paid first. I don't understand the silliness about not paying your quarterback. They should have taken right. care of this a while ago. They should have done yes. it before Carson Wentz's contract, contract got done. But the one thing about Dak – that I'm very high on, high key, is the things that Brady does, which is mm-hmm. he he's he's not out there, okay? He's not shotgunning beers. Not that I have a problem with that. Right. But I also want, if, if you're not that personality, don't do those things. Like, there was a time when Dak was hanging with Zeke. You remember the, uh, the water the gun incident? Yeah, he was also in the club popping bottles with right. Zeke. Right, and it was like, no, 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 no. Like, that's not you. Let's let's just stay on track. Dak is a very even-keeled guy, and to me, like, that is what I want in a quarterback. Like, I don't want you to be super high and super low. I don't want Odell-ness. Again, love Odell. True. Perfectly fine with how Odell behaves. That's not the issue. I just don't want the quarterback doing that. Right. And there's a reason for that. Like, if if you're a leader... You need to have leadership qualities. And it sounds corny and cliche, but it's just the truth. No, and true. the reason for the Cowboys being a winning organization right now is because of Dak Prescott. You can say all you want about yes. Ezekiel Elliott. You can say all you want about Amari Cooper. Mm-hmm. What has been the factor that has led them to being 32 and 16 in his time there? 
They win every year. Like, pay the guy. And he is, and, and being that, Jerry's right, like being that they came from fourth round, sixth round, and have developed into what they are, and I know everyone freaks out about like, oh, you know, Dak's not that talented, oh, I'll take Carson Wentz, take Carson Wentz. I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make any wild predictions here. Yes, I am. I think that Dak is going to have a more successful career than Carson Wentz. You said it, and you did it. I said it, Woo, I said it. it. I said Episode it. Episode 100. I said it. Woo. And I'm I and don't it's hit so me. Exciting. Don't hit me with that Super Bowl nonsense, okay? Cuz Nick Foles won that Super Bowl. Don't you ever forget it. Nick Foles won that Super Ain't Bowl. Ain't nobody going to forget it. People in Philly don't forget it. So you shouldn't forget it. Nick This is Foles. joy. This is this is a this is the take. This the take. That's what we do around here. Okay? I think I think Carson <laughs> I may, a have, lot, I, I may have had too much coffee. I'm very wrong. No, no, I was going to say, a lot is riding on this year. Like, the safe version of this is waiting for this year to play out. Cause, and hopefully Carson Wentz stays on the field. But I'm with you. Dak doesn't get rattled. He's just here to play ball. The only problem he has is when he's hanging out with Zeke and he's like, you know, we should go do this. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to come too. It's like, no, don't, no, don't do, do nothing that. with but Zeke. But he hasn't done that. But he hasn't done that recently. Not recently, no. Right. Yes. So that's what I think that's what I think is going to happen. I like that. At Joy Taylor Talks, if you disagree. Oh, man. I'm not going to write you back, though. That's <laughs> not what I do. Unless, unless you talk about equal pay, and then I might get upset. So just, just throw that at the bottom of your tweet about Dak <laughs> and Wentz, and then I might respond. Other than that, I'm not interested. Um, I am just kidding. I am interested. I'm just, I'm just not going to I'm going to read it, but I'm just not going to respond. <laughs> I'm like, what, is this, what is this rant going to end about the... <laughs> it's not now. <laughs> Lose the power rankings. 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 Lose the week. Starting with you. Uh, you ready. Just. Everybody. Put, somebody put bets on if I was going to get it or not. Episode 100. I didn't. <laughs> somebody was right. It's too. so weird to me that you had a mustache and now you don't. <laughs> I thought it, it needed would. to be said. What? You don't. Do you not have hair in your mouth? Hair? Like an inside mustache? <laughs> inside mustache. What the f***? <laughs> uh, it's so. such a so weird. <laughs> you know, I went over my rules for for my life rules with Ashley earlier. Yeah. We were discussing weirdness. Yeah. I crossed which a lot we'll, of them. we'll actually get to in this uh in this segment, so it's perfect. Um because Jim Harbaugh is so weird. And I love Jim Harbaugh. Uh, he's so weird. Recruiting and me out of high school. I, I said I have three rules for life. Okay. Every day, every person should wake up and just tr- if if everyone woke up. And just try to follow these simple rules, yeah. the world would be perfect. Okay. There's a lot of weight on this list. One, don't be rude. Right? I like it. If you start off with the simple stuff of don't be rude, right. you'll never get to being angry or violent or anything past that. Like, just try, just try to not be rude. Don't and then everything that follows down that road of anger yeah. will, will never happen. Because you're just be trying rude. to not be rude. Okay? Yeah. We've got to make a list of this. Don't be rude. Okay, don't be dumb. Just oh, don't be dumb. Okay. It's not hard. Just don't be dumb. Oh. It's just like, it's really, if you think about it, if you think about all the dumb stuff people do, if, if you're like, I wonder if they thought about not being dumb today. Okay. They wouldn't do that. The problem is, rude is not subjective. I think dumb is. No. Nope. <laughs> By definition. Like, don't be dumb is rude. <laughs> <laughs> no, you. I disagree. <laughs> yes, I disagree I wholeheartedly. Thank I disagree you. wholeheartedly. <laughs> how how in the world is dumb subje- subjective? Because it's like it's pers- it's based on your perception of what is smart and what's not, not on that person's perspective of what's smart and what's not. So if you know, like for example, you know something, okay, yeah. and then you don't do it. Okay, and that like, and then it affects you or other people in a negative fashion. Is that dumb? Well, the or word is it you, rude? The, the one the word you left out was should. I feel like it's violating both life rules. Third, third, which may be the most important of all. Okay, <laughs> we have Matt clear too. Don't be weird. <laughs> don't be weird. Okay. Every day, look in the mirror and tell yourself, don't be rude, don't be dumb, weird. don't be weird. Okay, but being crazy is okay. Completely acceptable, as I explained to Ashley earlier. Interesting. Because she was like, you are surrounded by weird people. And I said, I wholeheartedly disagree. I'm surrounded by crazy people, but not weird. You are teetering today, though. I like to play on the Because inside mustache is a weird thing to say. (laughs) You (laughs) asked me if I had hair in my mouth. I because you shaved your mustache, so there might be little hair pieces that fell into your mouth. Actually, well, Michelle was talking to me about, remember the first time you actually, like... Yeah, actually, I completely take that back. You're incredibly weird. You you, put actual hair in your freezer. Yeah, that's that's how Joy, like, Which is, like, one of the first conversations that I've ever had with you, and I was completely distraught yeah. by, by the level of weirdness. Yeah, Let's was, start with Harbaugh, because he said Tiddlywinks today, which is why I, he's weird. Tiddlywinks is a thing. 
Let's go. I'm sorry. I'm going to stop doing this. Go ahead. We'll continue. start with Harbaugh. Okay, so he's he says players who skip bowl games hurt their own legacy. He said it on part of my take. Shout out part of my take. No, Great I, I, podcast. yeah, I, yeah. I heard um, it. But he's, he's talking about legacy. Okay, like like old college w- w- white coaches talking about legacy. It's just, uh, I'd like, I'd like, there's a highway of miss me and all of it needs to go on Yes, there. that is fair. Okay? That is fair. The, that was on the miss me train. All the way down. It's so, like, oh, bye guys. Yeah, this is, uh, it goes so fast. Just speed. <laughs> yeah, cool. I don't care. No, no, there's no speed limit. Just keep it going. Keep it going. Keep missing me with it. I'm on this side of right. the divider, so I feel safe. It's no, you know, I'm cool over here. So they got eviscerated in the Peach Bowl last year. Lost to Florida 41 to 15. And he was missing four of his starters so that might have something to do with it okay and here's the thing if you are entering the nfl draft and you're not playing in the college football playoff and i'm willing to even i'm willing to give in on if you don't want to play in the college football playoff too although i don't love it but if it was if you really truly felt like uncomfortable playing in the college football playoff i would be okay with that too because i'm not gonna tell someone else what to do with their body in their career however if you're not playing in the college football playoff and you choose to sit out because you're Entering the NFL draft. Right. Uh, who are you to tell a kid that he shouldn't do that and that's going to hurt his college legacy? To, to play in some completely inconsequential, meaningless exhibition game where the school's going to make a bajillion dollars, he'll be making zero. He'll get some awesome swag, though, and a cool trip. True. And he may so. also, I don't know, like Jake Butt tear his ACL and then right. lose a year, get drafted, and yes. then three games later tear his ACL again. Or you could Jalen Smith it, yes, which no we all know how out. that went. Yeah. Okay? And, like, those are just a few examples. Yeah. But you've just had an entire college career of wear and tear on your body. Maybe you just want to chill out, rehab some stuff, and be ready for the combine. You don't owe the school anything else. True, but to be a college football traditionalist, let me put my college football traditionist hat on. Oh, that's what it is? I think that... You look crazy. You actually very literally <laughs> do mess up your legacy with the college. Because we're all, all the colleges are keeping tracks of certain numbers and certain things that can be done and can't be done. Now, if you care about your college football legacy, then yes, it's a no-brainer to play in that game. All those players do. That's the problem. He, he had an issue with probably the way Jarrell, Jarrell Peppers handled the situation and other stars, but if they don't care about winning for you or for the university, you can't make them care about it. Like, at Notre Dame, the, we got back in the games when Golden was like, all right, be new time to pad the stats. You know what I mean? It's not about, like, oh, I got to do this for Notre Dame. It's individual accolades. So if you're a person that cares about your legacy, which statistics are a part of that, then, yeah, playing the bowl game. If you don't give up care about any of that and you try to go to the NFL and feed your family and feed your kids, half those people going to the NFL, then well, I'm not playing in this game. I don't want to play in all those games. I want to play in all those games so I can play in the games right. that I can't even get to yet. <laughs> exactly, and that's my point. So I, I just don't want to hear any more about this legacy talk. And it, it's Nick Saban does the same thing. I'm just, just stop, okay? Yeah. You get Protect their own pockets. Yeah, just stop it. It's, yeah. it's it's You're not fooling anyone with don't that hot rude. take. Don't be dumb. Don't be weird. And he compared it to tiddlywinks. Just, just as a note, before we exit to the next loser, right. no one in the history of planet Earth, I'm comfortable saying, has ever said, I'm going to compete at tiddlywinks. Yeah. I, I Yeah. It's a just dated l- reference. L- l- let's leave it there. Okay. okay. It's, that's, a, that's a made up story. Fake news. Okay. So, and, and what I wish was fake news, you all know how I feel about hot dogs. They're the devil. And Oscar Mayer, Strong. who is... Um, is basically the manufacturer of the devil. Okay. Uh, unveiled a hot dog flavored ice cream sandwich with spicy Dijon mustard gelato. <laughs> that is gag worthy. <laughs> Sometimes you're dramatic. That's good. That was worth it. And candied. <laughs> Say candy what? It's honestly my eyes are watering. Candied hot dog pieces. <laughs> now, hot dog pieces is one thing. If you candy them. <laughs> now we're so, talking something different because so I don't know what that tastes like. You gross. know what I'm saying? That could be nice. It's so I have the chills. <laughs> candy, it's so like little bits because you, you've had things candied before, though, gross. right? Yes, I've had candied bacon. Okay, so it'd be like that with hot dogs in it, and you're still okay. I think you're not understanding. Shame on you. <laughs> That's all I have to say about Little that. Little crystal things in the ice cream. Now, the whole c- construction, that is the devil. Like, if you were right about them because they created that, like, that's bad. This is this is like making Frankenstein. This yeah. is like the people that yeah. clone it's things. It's scary, yeah. Okay? This yeah. is like the people that abuse robots. Mm-mm. None of this is okay. None of it. 
All right. It's pretty. This is like the people who experiment on aliens. We should get some. This all uh, this goes in the this is this this is the burn. This is in the burn pile. This and all of the files are in the burn pile. So you don't want to try it. No. Next on uh, the loser list is is the Raiders. Um, so the Raiders. It's just, I, I'm so excited for Hard Knocks tonight, Woo! and I can't wait to see all the content. Mm. But Antonio Brown is is not ready, and that sucks. According yeah. to Chris Sims, he burned his feet by entering a cryotherapy machine without the proper footwear, and his feet were frostbitten. So That's if you hadn't is. seen the very disgusting picture, which we are looking at now, Bam. of Antonio Brown's feet. I'm sorry for that. That wasn't a whole lot of warning, Ooh. but it is what it is. You've probably already seen it. Looking good, A.B. No, it's not good. And look, an athlete's feet in general, I guess maybe if you're a swimmer, not as important. Try Hell yeah, it's important to you. Niggas. I mean, for the flipping. But nope. like, it's not a lot of impact. Well, I guess when you push off the wall. It's important for most sports. Okay, yeah. Most sports, you need your feet. Yeah, most To be most, in great most, shape. Yeah. And yeah. He, he burned his feet, and this seems like a simple solve. I'm I'm positive someone told him he needs to wear the footwear in the cryotherapy yes. machine. And he was like, I don't want to do and it. And for whatever reason, he chose not to. It seems silly, and now he's not ready. And like, that sucks. Like, we all want Antonio Brown. I personally want Antonio Brown to have a huge year. Even as a Steelers fan, especially so everyone can stop. Every Steelers fan I've run into is like, ah, well, big mouth, yeah, whining and complaining. Everyone's gone. I'm tired um, of the divas. Yeah, yeah. I go, yeah. sure. Antonio Brown, this is a six round pick that gave you incredible, uh, incredible production. They're also for not wrong. Very little though. money. And That's true. No, it's completely ungrateful, is what it is. Yeah. Thanks and it's this that. idea of like an obligation, but then they don't, they don't trip like that when somebody gets cut. Because they didn't like perform the way they needed to. It's always one side, and I get it. It's fans, but I, I we all want Antonio Brown to be good this year. All fantasy football fans want Antonio Brown to be good this Facts. year. I'm sure Raiders fans do, and mm -hmm. it's not really helpful for John Gruden in this situation either. I think we were going to have Antonio Brown sitting out during Hard Knocks at some point in time because we've seen it a lot, and he's a big star. We weren't going to see him for some reason. This is a legitimate reason. Oh, I'm not he saying it's, it's not legitimate, but it's like. <sighs> It, you got to you got to wear the shoes, you yeah. know. Yeah, and you actually they actually there's footies if you've ever been in these Example things. Example in the mirror. Don't be rude. Don't be weird. Don't be dumb. Not your first time using the cryotherapy machine. Got to wear the shoes. True. Yeah, that is a version of not being dumb. Yeah, I like that. Is it debatable? Is that an example of a debatable dumbness? No. No. Thank no. You. Yeah. Damn. Now, if it was his first time in the cryotherapy machine, not dumb. And he wouldn't have got those blisters from doing it one time. Those are that's well, repeatedly maybe. not putting the booties on. No, that's repeatedly not putting the booties on. You Have put you the done one of those things before? I know that there's booties involved. Like if you do big dunk tanks, mm -hmm. like when you do cold water, like we have footies at Notre Dame to put on your feet to protect your toes from being frostbit because that water and how long you sit in it, your toes the, the get ice, frostbit. The ice tubs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, another reason why I could never be an elite athlete. I hate icing. Oh, I feel so good. I hate you get out it. though. Just you bounce back. Oh, woo! Why would you want to be that cold? Because you can feel tight. You no. can get tight. Now, you know, you now the, heat, loose. the heating pads are wonderful. I will do that all day long. You can't be too loose. You're too loosey goosey. I, I need a loosey, looseyness. I, need a little, I, I, I hate. I hate. I hate icing. Yes, Heller. No, I didn't have anything. You're talking, you always in my chest. I'm not even. You he literally responded with it in his chest too. Like they like didn't even have the fortitude to say anything back to Joy in the mic. <laughs> we were out before that. So I yeah. Okay. Okay. That's fair. Okay, what's in the Migos culture report this week? Monday, Drake finished off his OVO Fest in Toronto with a slew of star-studded surprise guests. Cardi B, Meg Thee Stallion, Rick Ross, Gucci Mane, Meek Mill, The Baby, Chris Brown, YG, Offset, Tyga. He performed the entire show with the Larry O'Brien trophy oh. on stage with him in the back. <laughs> As Drizzy Drake said himself, B-Words loving the drive and, give, and I ain't giving him a break. Giving friends the look, the verse, and even the hook. That's why the whole song sounded like Drake featuring Drake. Ah, I butchered it. I butchered it. Anyway. Rick Ross' tenth album comes out this Friday, and it'll be featuring a uh, final submission of the song of the summer, "Gold Roses," featuring Drake. Everyone needs to stop playing and give Drake his flowers while we still have him in the game. That is the culture report. Stop playing and give Drake his flowers. Give Drake his flowers. And Rick Ross Did you see and Drake the picture the with Drake and the 
holding the Larry O'Brien like Jordan. I did not, I did not see that, it's great. but I, I can imagine. I've seen a lot of versions of Drake to imagine it. It's everywhere, yeah, and it's it's great. Um, I, I love it. I love all of it. I'm here for all of it. I'm also here for Meg Thee Stallion. We haven't discussed Meg Thee Stallion you on the podcast not. yet. Big old freak. Yes, I. I I'm, are you really? Let's. You want to have a discussion? Like, where oh, no, I'm just, stand? I'm like a fan. I, yeah. I think she's amazing. She obviously started Hot Girl Summer, which the internet appreciates. Thank yes, you for that. Yes, yes. And it has, it's been hot out here. And I, does that change? Michelle and I was talking about it. Does it, are people actually moving? Like, are people feeling the, the waves of Hot Girl Summer, Hot Boy Summer? Like, is it, is it affecting people in relationships? Like, what is this? Um, what is this I don't whole think people movement? in solid relationships are, are affected by it. I, it's, it's a single person thing. But I'm saying, but is it actually a thing? Like, is it like, Popping on Bumbler right now? Or? I don't know. I don't know. I don't use Bumbler. Okay. Well, so I can't I answer that. I don't know what you think. So like, what, I don't know. I'm saying. Like, is it popping on Bumbler? Yeah, yeah. Hot girls <laughs> in the room. Are you, <laughs> Ashley, are you having a hot girl summer? Ashley, <laughs> Ashley would be the key to hot girl summer. Like, what's going on? Ashley, is it popping in the streets? Like, what's going on? Bumble. <laughs> <laughs> That's Bumble. It's okay. Bumble. Learn. I'll write that down. Okay. Delete Bumbler. Delete Bumbler. Is Hot Girl sum, Summer affecting Bumbler? Like, yeah, is it? A, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, to my knowledge, it's a caption, right? So I think it affects Instagram. Yeah. Oh, it's not. Oh, it's not right. a caption. It's a are lifestyle. Are you having a Hot Girl Summer? Yeah, you're not. Are you not having? Doesn't seem like. I'm laying out on this. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, I love I, I love Meg Thee Stallion. Uh, yes, oh, not cash. Bars. Hey. She she's got bars for days. She's uh, rap rapping for real. Uh, her album was kind of, I mean, it was, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. I love it. You gotta be ready for it. Um, and I'm here for it and I'm, I'm here, I'm here for the summer wave. I, I feel like summer, we are extending summer because around this time yes. it starts I to feel like, like oh my God, summer's ending a little bit. Like the yeah. kids are about to be back in school. And then as, as soon as the kids get back in school, it kind of feels like summer's over. Yeah. But I think as adults, we have collectively agreed we're going to drag summer out a couple extra weeks. Right. And we also like, I think football season is like, we just think fall, but it's like, no, like there's a whole, there's a lot of games that are had in Play, the summer. Played in the heat. Yeah. Like let's enjoy and all also, those days. And also, you know, global warming. So it's hotter out I mean, for again. longer, Shout and there's Al nothing Gore. that we can do about it. Yeah. So I feel like we just have to really embrace uh, this like hot people lifestyle because it's hot out here. Hot, yeah, it's yeah. Keep sweating out there. <laughs> Keep sweat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining us on our 100th episode. Hey, did you guys enjoy it? How was it? How was it for you? And you, how did you like it? I what was your it was favorite fun. part? I thought it was fun. I was talking to the audience, Joy. Okay, leave it in comments for Brandon. <laughs> uh, seriously, though, we really appreciate you guys supporting yes. the podcast yes. every week. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've had a lot of fun doing it. Mm -hmm. We're not, it's not, I'm sounding like I'm giving a speech where it's over. It's not. Yeah, it's no, just, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, it's like, <laughs> so, guys, uh, uh, we were really no, waiting to get here. But we and, do appreciate uh, it. This is, a, this is a big milestone for, <laughs> yes. any, for any production um, exactly. to reach 100 episodes. So, Ooh. we appreciate it. I appreciate all of you guys very much. Thank and all you. the hard work that you do. Appreciate um, it. I know I make it look like it's all me, but it's not. Yeah, <laughs> I actually you know, do. Uh, no, I do very me. little, actually. Um, I appreciate all of the work that you guys do. You do a great, wonderful, wonderful job start to finish every day. Uh, social media, Thank production, you. research, producing. Appreciate it. All of it. I really do. Thank um, you guys. And we appreciate you fans. guys for watching and supporting and following us. And if you want to share... Follow us on our YouTube page at Maybe I'm Crazy Podcast and subscribe. That. Share with your friends at Maybe I'm Crazy Pod on all the social media outlets. You can listen can on that. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartMedia app, and SoundCloud. And of course, mm. you can watch on YouTube. Follow Brandon at Newman Show 99, myself at Joy Taylor Talks. We will catch you next week. Thanks again to Earl for coming in. Yes, shout out Earl. Um, always great. Yes. Always great always stuff. Good. Um, and, you know, I know that my list is the best list. Um, we didn't actually even give your list. So did we give your list? We didn't talk about my list. All right, well, let's fine. just give it real quick. Before I, just, say, okay. 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 I will say, I Because people are upset I wanna, about your list, yeah. and rightfully so, because it's not no, right. I think, just really quickly. Okay, let me, I, I got to find it. You did make it look nice. Thank you, guys. I'm very artistic. You made it look nice. Okay, Jay-Z at number five, Big at number four, Drake at number three, Kendrick Lamar at number two, Lil Wayne at number one. The reasoning behind, I, I, I a lot of factors, flow, delivery, lyricism, impact on the game, spittin', longevity. Spittin'. So, but I say all that thing, all those things say, Kanye should probably be in my top five, but I think all those guys wrote for him, so it's like, you know. All right, um, and your sixth man is? Pusha T. 
bars on bars on bars. Right. And then you have apologies to a lot of people. You should have apologi- right. apologies you know, to. Yeah. I don't Sorry, have a huge Tupac. problem with your list. Obviously, most of the people on your list are on my list. Yes. Um, obviously, Kendrick, you know, gets lots of props, as he should. Right. And he would be in my top 10. Obviously, top five like is just more exclusive. Of sort, yes. However, Drake is... An actor. A lot of... Drake, I would classify as an entertainer. If you squeeze me. He's new OJ? You know what I mean? You can't because of the bars. Like, I hear you. I hear the bars. But the bars. And I appreciate the bars. But the bars are also the accompanied bars. with a lot of singing. Okay, yeah. wait a minute. Let's do this. He's a good episode. aggregator of other people's bars. Give me this. 100 episode, real quick. Jeremy, top five rappers right now. Yeah, I know Jeremy has, uh, Jeremy has thoughts. Because Jeremy's the music guy. Casey Musgraves. Top five. <laughs> Casey Musgraves. No, uh... From the top, one is three sacks, two is Pac, three is Kendrick, four is Ye, five is Push. So you just this moved guy. Jay out? This guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's from Virginia. Yeah, push got to be in the top five. Yeah. You okay. from Virginia, Push got to be in the top five. Like, here's yeah, the thing about this that. list. Everyone's, it's, it's like Earl said. Everyone's their opinion and their right. mood and their yes. vibe to it. Yes. Um, and, and it really way, can't be defined. Earl did not have a list. <laughs> you yeah. said he had yeah, a list. I we have sure. to say that. I did. told him, but, you know, have he, a list. he remixed this. It's what Earl does. List. Yes, yeah. he, he, made, he made his own decisions there. Um, but give us your list, you know, and comment on it. You can tell me that mine is right, because I'm sure it's... Most of the comments are that it's right. That's what, yeah, okay. um, it's I didn't check strong. those yet. It's very but, strong. Anyway, yeah. thanks again for joining us on our 100th episode. We appreciate y'all, and we will catch you next week. Bye. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm not. Uh.